Hi friends, it's day six of Light On Yoga. Today we're going over Parivrita Parsvakonasana, and this is eight stars out of 60, which is, I think, getting more accurate. You know I've been disagreeing with some of the difficulty level rating. You don't need to remember these names. This is revolved or twisted um, extended side angle. So it's like reversed, revolved, twisted, all those things are fine. You don't need to remember these Sanskrit words. However, I will just say that once you start to hear more of these things, you will start to get some sort of clues about the pose. It's kind of like if you know a few Latin words or roots, and then you can maybe deduce a little bit about what the what a word means if you know something about the Latin root. So for example, parvrita, we already know from parvrita trikonasana, we know that means revolved. So if you hear parvrita, parivrita, that is going to mean the pose is revolved. And then parsvakonasana. So, you know, you might not remember that that means side angle, but parsva meant side and kona meant angle. So maybe if you remember some of that stuff, it gives you a clue. So he says, this is revolving lateral angle posture. I've never heard anyone call it that. I'd say it's revolved side angle. But anyways, this also comes up pretty early in Ashtanga yoga um, in the primary series, even though it's like, I think you need to be kind of warm, but something I thought was really interesting here is in the photo, I mean, I put a photo at the beginning, but here you can see in the photo, his the outer edge of his extended foot, AKA the foot of the leg that is extended right here. This is what I'm talking about. The outside edge of his foot is coming up off the ground. So I tried it without doing that and with doing that. And because, because most teachers nowadays will cue the, ex the outer edge of your extended foot, that should be going towards the ground. It should be digging into the ground. The outer edge of the foot should be going down into the ground. However, here it's coming up out of the ground. And this gives you so much more range of motion to complete this twist. If your outer edge of your foot comes up because you're twisting, I guess that's fine according to Iyengar. <laughs> However, I would just tell you that if you don't do that, if you keep your outer edge of your foot down into the ground, like how it is when you start out, because we start from, a, again, a kind of warrior two position, that is gonna make it almost definitely inaccessible to complete this if you're new to yoga or if you haven't been practicing in a while, etc. So let's give it a try according to his instructions. Oh, and by the way, I thought it was funny that he said that this asana helps remove waste matter from the colon without strain because, okay, maybe without the typical strain, but this pose, it's a little bit of a strain. <laughs> Our rice cooker is singing right now. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, so we're gonna get in. I'm not gonna read through all the instructions again because it's been the same every single time. From Tadasana, you jump. This is again, four, to four and a half feet relative depending on your length. And the exhale and rotate, hold each side for half a minute to a minute. And he says, in cases where the movements are done first on one side and then on the other side, the time taken should be the same in each case. The general rule applies here. So from now on, we just know that that's the general rule. If you hold it on one side, you hold it on the other side for the same amount of time. All right, let's give it a try. So from Tadasana, jumping four to four and a half feet wide, turning the right toes out 90 degrees, the left toes in 60 degrees, bending the front knee so that the thigh is parallel to the floor, and it creates a right angle. So this is the right angle in your knee. All right, that's about right, palms facing down. And he says, you're gonna just turn. You're just gonna turn. So this would be extended side angle, as we know from yesterday. So we're gonna revolve that. So we're gonna turn all the way around. Again, you're gonna want your armpit on your knee. So this is where it already gets really hard and my back heel and outer edge of my foot is coming up off the ground to make this happen in my body. You're gonna get your armpit on your knee, put your hand on the floor. I'd recommend a block here. And then your top arm reaches up over your top ear. And then you come back up, switch sides. This is really challenging, I don't wanna underestimate or underemphasize the fact that this is really challenging. Your foot has to come up off the floor. So let me just say, I would probably almost never teach this <laughs> in a yoga class, just because it's a bit confusing. You really have to twist a lot. There's a lot of compression going on in your abdomen. The heel is almost always going to get strained or come up off the floor. What I would teach instead and what a lot of people teach instead uh, as a sort of variation on this is from a lunge, which means your hips turn so they're not sort of open to the side but they're turned towards one side and then twist maybe getting the armpit there and reaching up this still gives you a deep twist and a big opening in your shoulder but not as much 
of a strain in your lower body or in your abdomen. Another thing that you could do is keep the legs the way that he wants you to have your legs here, which is warrior two basically. And then again, using more like using your elbow across your thigh, you get a little bit more support. You're not falling as much onto your leg if you can't reach. Another good option is from warrior two to just turn and then place your hand on the ground, not outside the foot towards the left if we're on the left side, but just to the other side of the foot. It's a good place to start so that you don't have to get your whole upper body twisted over your leg. All right, when you're done, back to Svasana, and that's it. So like I said, that one's, I think, fairly difficult in terms of difficulty can mean many things in yoga. Um, it means, you know, how much you need to warm up before attempting it. That one, I would say, you should probably warm up. So you'll also notice a lot of the poses have the revolved or reverse sort of counter pose meant to balance you out. So you open up one way and then you're going to open up the other way as well. So it does all feel really nice when you do them all together. So that's one that I wouldn't just say if you want to wake up and do a couple yoga poses, do that one. That's more if you want to have a more full, robust practice, or maybe if you're an Ashtangi, you are familiar with that pose and you could drop us some tips in the comments. All right. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.